Second Timothy chapter number three. The Bible says in verse number one, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Right there is a, the whole problem right there. We have embraced the doctrine of Satan, which is my right to my claim to myself. Selfishness is the problem in America. Said men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accuser, accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away let's pray father we bless you lord we certainly thank you for allowing us to be in the house of god lord it's only by your grace i'm not under a bridge oh i bless your holy name for your goodness and your mercy and your tender kindness lord your long suffering i thank you for the privilege of being able to call on your name now, Father, I pray you'd help us this morning. There's no telling the needs of people's hearts here. But Lord, I know the answer, and his name is Jesus. And I pray that you'd speak to every heart. I pray for those that, Lord, need encouragement, you'd encourage them. Those that need understanding, you'd enlighten them. Those that, Lord, are beat down, you'd edify them and build them up. God, I pray you'd do a work in our lives and in our hearts. Lord, we're without excuse. You've been so good to us. We ought to certainly be swinging from the chandeliers, shouting the praises of Jesus. But Lord, remind us of how good you've been to us. Lord, do something for us. We certainly pray if there's somebody here stranger to the grace of God, today would be the day of their salvation. Thank you for these in attendance. Be with those that are sick and afflicted. Be with those that, Lord, desire to be here and couldn't be here today. They're providentially hindered. Bless them the same. And I pray you'd certainly help your people. We'll thank you for what you do. Use this unworthy vessel. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice as Paul's writing one of his last letters. As he's about ready to go off the scene and go on to glory. He's writing to young Timothy, his son in the faith, a man he won to the Lord, a man he's trained in the things of God. He's given Timothy some final instructions. And notice that he pins down a promise. He said in verse number 1, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Didn't say they might come. Didn't say perhaps would come said, Mark her down, this is a promise from God. Perilous times shall come. That word perilous means dangerous. It means hazardous. It means unsafe. Let me ask you a question. Anybody lock your door last night when you went to bed? I remember a time when you didn't. Anybody lock your car out there before you come in? I remember a time you didn't do that in churchyard. I remember a time when they didn't lock the church doors. People come in and pray anytime they wanted to. Hmm? But we live in dangerous times. We live in hazardous times. We live in unsafe times. But that word perilous also means vulgar. We live in vulgar times. These kids see things on TV. Used to be banned from TV. Nah, these kids hear things that used to be banned. Can I say on the job, you hear women use language that used to men wouldn't even use. I mean, there used to be a time to say they cuss like a sailor. Now they just say, well, they cuss like everybody else. Huh? Amen. We live in vulgar times. And it seems like there's no constraint on how vulgar people will be. Right. And uh, you're supposed to accept it and just uh, take it as normal. It's not normal, but it is a fulfillment of the promise that perilous times uh, shall come upon us. Uh, we also know that Jesus said in the last days there'd be wars and rumors of wars. Uh, 
There's wars going on all over. It talked about uh, there'd be a great falling away. And uh, uh, churches and houses should be full, uh, but many of them uh, are empty today uh, because of the times that we live in. We notice the promise. I wanted you to notice the particulars. Verse number 2 through 4, he talks about what will be happening. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. Selfish, trying to get everything they can get. Covetous, that means they want everything everybody else has got. Hmm? Uh, boasters, uh, bragging about what they have. Hmm? Proud, Lord have mercy, we've got so much pride in this day. Blasphemers, that's attributing the works of the devil to the Lord. Hmm? Uh, disobedient to parents. I've never seen a children like in this day and age. Uh, used to, children did what the parents said. Now parents do what the children say. Hmm? Yeah. Disobedient, parents tell them to pick up their socks and they mouth off the parents. Parents tell them to do their homework, they mouth off the, uh, the parents. Uh, uh, parents tell them to uh, help out the yard, they mouth off at the parents. And the parents end up doing it all for them. Shame on your parents. Hmm? Listen, back in my day, we didn't mouth off to the parents. And if we did, we didn't do it often. There was a consequence. Hmm? Listen, if your little darling is too lazy to do what you tell them to do, uh, uh, take away a lot of their stuff. Sure. Mm. Uh, give them a little hard labor. They'll be glad they get their stuff back, and they'll be glad to do what you say. Mm. It's about breaking their will, but yet you enable their will. Mm. You're welcome. That didn't cost you anything. Huh? We all right? Mm. Uh, unthankful. I've never seen a time when everybody thinks they're owed something. They're not thankful for what they have. And speaking of young people, nowadays young people start out and they want everything mom and dad worked for 30 years for, huh? Mm. It's called work for it, save for it. Mm. But, you know, we, we live in a day and age where they're just unthankful. They think they're entitled to it. I've never seen people who thought they was entitled to something because of uh, who they were, what their name was what gender they are, what color they are. You know what we're entitled to? Hell. Right. Mm. That's what we deserve. But by the grace of God, I'm not going there. Hallelujah. Uh, unholy. Boy, we live in an unholy. I remember a time when people respected the church, respected the man of God, respected people of faith. But we live in a day and age where people are so unholy and ungodly, so wicked. Huh? It says, without natural affection. Uh, used to, it was just natural, known. Mama loved her baby. Now they have them aborted. Hmm. Yeah, it didn't cost you anything. It won't hurt you. Uh, now, e even if you don't know you have one, you can take an abortion pill just in case. You know when you didn't need abortion pills? When you didn't have sex outside of marriage. Yeah. When you didn't have a loose life. Yeah. Amen. Oh, I know, that's real popular, isn't it? Hmm. I'm going somewhere, hang with me. Uh, uh, without natural affection. Used to, people cared about their fellow man. They cared about their neighbor. Mm. People just don't care anymore. Amen. Why? Because they're lovers of their own selves. Uh, goes on to say, uh, truce breakers. Mm. Used to, you didn't have to sign a contract. You can shake your hand on something. By the way, used to, a handshake was binding in a court of law. Now you've got to sign it in triplicate, and it still means you can get out of it. Hmm? Uh, truce breakers, false accusers. Uh, listen, how come there's got to be an election season every year? I'm so tired of election ads, aren't you? Yeah. And they all lie. Amen. They lie about what they're going to do, and they lie about their opponent. Where did they learn that? Because America's full of a bunch of liars. Sure. Hmm? False accusers. How in the world are they blaming Donald Trump for the gas prices? <laughs> well, listen, I, I, I don't care if you like Trump or don't like Trump. I don't care if you like Biden or don't like Biden. Well, let's just, let's just wake up and smell the roses. When Trump was in office, gas was about $1.60. Right. You know, gas is 4 5 6 $7, depending on what part of the country you live in. That's not Trump's fault. Uh, they're false accusers. Nobody will take blame or responsibility for themselves or their own actions. Mm. Oh, boy, we're having real fun, aren't we?
Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Isn't it amazing? People that work hard, live right, do right. You're, you're the off-scour of the world. Uh, uh, everybody else needs to milk off of you because you don't deserve it. Hmm? Uh, you know those riots we had a couple years ago where they didn't arrest people that looted and burned down places and all that? Well, now that's becoming norm in certain parts of the country. You know, just this past week they went into... Uh, uh, the big what, what's the name of that purse Louis Vuitton store up there in Kenwood Town Center and, and walked out with all kinds of bags and everything and they said well that's normal yeah. you know? first of all if you got a $2,000 purse you need to become my friend okay <laughs> I'm serious you know, I'm all about quality, and I'm all about you get what you pay for, but two grand for a purse that you're going to throw on the floor, and, you know, anyway, never mind. So, uh, but people that do evil, they're made heroes. But te people that live right, do right, and be right, you're, you're terrible. Uh, well, let's get out of this. Traitors, heady, high-minded, uh, there's some people got their nose so far up in the air. Uh, they don't even smell smog. Their nose is higher than that, huh? Uh, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. All you got to do to see that come to reality is just drive by a golf course on Sunday morning. Hmm? Look at how many people will fill a stadium to watch people play ball, but they won't come to the house of God. Look at how many people put stock in what CNN says, but they don't believe the Bible. Amen. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. We see the particulars. We see the promise. But notice the pattern. And verse number 5 says, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. A form has nothing in it. It's an empty shell. And there's a lot of places that call themselves places of worship. They look like a church. They sound like they're churchy. But they're empty on the inside. And there's a lot of folks that mm, come to Bible-believing churches. And they dress right. They say the right things but they're empty on the inside. They have a pattern to them, but there's no substance within them. Hmm. So I got to thinking about all this, and I want to preach on this thought this morning. I want to preach on in lieu of living in the last days. In lieu of living in the last days. Now, friend, I don't believe in date setting. The Bible makes it clear that even the Lord himself doesn't know when he's coming. Only the Father knows. Uh, can I tell you that anybody that's ever set a date's wrong? And I don't know when to put a time on this, but 10 years ago I didn't think it could get much worse, and it's got a lot worse. All I know is if we got another 10 years, another 20 years, another 100 years, on the scope of eternity, that's nothing. But I don't think we've got another 100 years. I doubt we've got another 20 years, and I really don't know if we've got another 10 years. Yeah. Amen. I do know one thing. The Lord promised he was coming back for his church. Amen. And he set some parameters in the word of God that would have to come to pass in order for him to come back. And they've all been fulfilled. So he can come at any time is what I'm trying to tell you. And in spite of that, Brother Tommy, we are living in the last days. So how are we to conduct ourselves in lieu of living in the last days? Well, can I say, first of all, uh, we need to repent. Jesus said in Revelation 3.19, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Now, he's talking to those that have trusted in him. He's talking to those that have put their faith in him. 
And he said, those that I love, I rebuke, and I chasten. He said, be zealous, therefore, and repent. He says, be excited and run to the opportunity to repent. In lieu of the fact that Jesus is coming, to be honest with you, uh, if we took inventory of our lives, uh, we'd all say that uh, we're not as close to God as we should be. There are things lacking in our lives. Uh, so in fact of that, we ought to repent and make certain we're ready when he comes. Uh, and listen, uh, how can we expect those that don't know him to repent when we that do know him refuse to repent? Uh, can I say... Uh, we just come out of revival meeting, 10 days of preaching. Had some wonderful preaching. I don't know where you'd ever get any better preaching. I mean, some wonderful preaching. And the men of God uh, uh, were anointed of God and preached, and I believe every message was heaven sent. Uh, but in lieu of that, some of you look the same as you did before revival meeting. Mm -hmm. See, repentance means to change your mind and turn your direction. Mm. You was headed this way, but God got your attention, now you're headed his way. Mm. But I look around, and some of you, there's been no change in your patterns. You're running the same way you did before revival meeting. Been no change. Mm. Some of you were late before church, or late getting to church before revival, and you're just late today. Mm. No change. Same patterns. Some of you don't pray any more than you did before revival. Sure. Some of you don't read the scriptures any more than before revival. Some of you don't uh, uh, have your mind stayed upon the Lord like you did before revival. There's been no change in your patterns. I got the remedy. It's called repentance. Right. Hmm? Can I say not only there's been no change in your patterns, there's no change in your pursuits. You're pursuing things that aren't attached to Jesus. You did it before revival, and you're doing it now. Now, don't get me wrong. You ought to have goals for your life. You ought to have pursuits for your life. You ought to want to better your life. Uh, you ought to uh, long to see things happen. Uh, you ought to want to change your world. Uh, but your first pursuit ought to be the Lord. Uh, some of you haven't even sought him today. You came to church out of obligation. You didn't come to church because you was pursuing him. Mm, that's why you've already turned me off. Mm. And some of you, there's been no change in the power of God in your life. One thing happens when you get revived, the power of God starts flowing in your life. And some of you are just as powerless as you was before revival meeting. There's been no change. Mm, in lieu of living in the last days, we ought to repent. We ought to change. We ought to let God work in our lives. Uh, we ought to put him first in our life. I thought about this. In lieu of living in the last days, we ought to be ready. Yeah. Amen. Hmm? Now, if we were expecting company to come to our house, uh, listen, it's, this isn't an issue because my wife has OCD. Our house is always clean. Now, there have been times in years gone by she'd run the vacuum twice in the same day. I'm thinking, we didn't get that much dust in a day, huh? But in lieu of the fact that we had guests coming, oh, she would, she would make certain the house was pristine. She would make certain there were new sheets on the beds. She would make certain there was food in the cupboard. She would find out what they liked to eat before they came and made sure we had that. And she would have everything prepared and everything ready for when our guests arrived. She'd make me park my truck on the street so they could park in the driveway. I mean, she'd have everything just right. Well, I'm here to tell you, Jesus is coming. Is your house in order? We ought to be ready. Huh? Can I say? We ought to be ready to give every man an answer. That's what the Bible says. First Peter 3.15, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. When was the last time somebody asked you what makes you tick? When was the last time somebody on the job said, you know what, I, I understand that you know everybody can have a bad day, but you just seem to never have a bad day. And even when you would perceive to have a bad day, it seems to be a good day with you. What is it with you? So well, you've got to understand where my hope comes from. It comes from Jesus. Hmm? 
young people is last time at school folks ask you well how come you don't participate in this and how come you don't do that and how come you don't cuss and how come you don't act like uh, the rest of us and you tell them because I know Jesus so you ought to be ready to give every man an answer thought about this we ought to be ready to approach the throne in prayer we know what the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians five seventeen: pray without ceasing it means you ought to always have an attitude of prayer Hebrews 4 16 let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need unfortunately a lot of times we can't go to the throne of grace to pray because we haven't been right with God so we got to get we got to repent so then we can pray we ought to be ready to pray I thought about this we ought to be ready to ascend oh yeah 1 Thessalonians 4 16 for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel with the trump of God the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord uh, let me help you something when the trumpet sounds it would be too late to get, get ready it would be too late to repent then and you need to be ready because the trumpet could sound any time friend you ought to be listening for the shout amen well uh, we need to repent in lieu of living in the last day we need to be ready thought about this in lieu of living in the last days we need to rescue the perishing all around us there are people who are drowning in this thing we call life some are drowning in debt some are drowning in despair some are drowning in depression some are down, drowning in distress Lord have mercy I just came from D.C. I will never complain about hillbilly drivers again Uh, I've learned this all around D.C. rules don't apply that's true they don't I mean it's every man for yourself there is no such thing as a break everything is give it gas mm. but can I say that there are people stressed out trying to get where they got to get running late got this going on got this going on and their minds are going a million miles an hour uh, people are perishing and don't even know it Jesus left us here to be salt and light to this world we're to minister to them in the midst of their troubles we're to be a help to them and an encouragement to them we're to show them the way and his name is Jesus hmm? but so many are not caught up in rescuing the perishing you don't have to throw a rock from where you live and you'll hit somebody that doesn't know the Lord. Amen. God help us to realize people need the Lord. Brother Wheeler had a couple, it was a blessing to meet them. Uh, they're part of an inner city church in Akron, Ohio. They're trying to reach out to street people and folks that most of the world's done forgot about. And uh, he had a wonderful testimony. He was in the Marines on a ship going to Desert Storm when a major who was a chopper pilot witnessed to him and led him to the Lord he was amazed that the major would even talk to him it was late at night and he went to get him something to drink and there was a major the major led him to the Lord talked talk to him about his soul talked to him about eternity he got saved Amen. his wife was in the Navy he didn't know her at the time but she got saved in the Navy and through the providence of God, they met. You, had, you know it had to be a providence of God when you get a jarhead marrying, you know, a salt. You know what I'm saying? Uh, am I telling it, Brother Jim? Yeah, I'm telling it. Hmm? But God saved them. They've been serving God. And she got up and sang that song, People Need the Lord. And I thought, oh, how they do. See, we get so caught up and busy in our own lives we forget about those that really don't have life and I'm talking about that abundant life that only the Lord can give in lieu of living in the last days never lose sight of the fact that people aren't ready we need to rescue the perishing I thought about this in lieu of living in the last days we ought to rejoice we ought to be happy 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 huh I was listening to the words that song uh, um, um, oh we used to sing it a lot brother Ray used to sing about uh, I'd like to live here longer than man's allotted days to watch the fleeting changes of life's uneasy ways. Well, I've seen enough changes. I'm ready to go. I don't need I don't need to wait around no more. Huh? 
Oh, yes, I'll live in glory. Let's just go today. That'd be all right. Huh? Where there'd be no more problems, no more sickness, no more heartaches, no more trials, no more temptation, no more sin. What a blessing. We're going to land uh, uh, where the Lord is the light of the city. and We'll be with him forevermore. We ought to be rejoicing. We ought to be the happiest people on the face of the earth. Uh, uh, folks ought to think there's something wrong with us. Uh, they ought to want to prescribe us doggy downers to bring us down uh, uh, because of the hope we have in Christ. But I get to look around. Most Christians look like the world. You look like you've been road wet and uh, road hard and put away wet. We ought to be rejoicing. We ought to be excited. Some of you visitors want, want to know what's wrong with that fellow sitting over there. He just loves the Lord. He ain't got over it yet. So, well, how come the rest of the crowd don't act like that? They got over it. I don't know. No, I'm just funning. But listen, we ought to rejoice. Our journey's almost over. Huh? Listen, it'll be a joy to get to go to glory. The place that we've aspired to for so long is almost reality. We ought to rejoice in that. Hmm? Rejoice that we fought a good fight, kept the faith, finished our course. What a blessing. But until he comes, and we're living in the last days, we need to remain. Need to remain humble. God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. You ever remember what garbage dump God found you in? You ought to remember what life was when you didn't have hope. You ought to remember every valley you've been in, and yet the Lord came by and helped you. You ought to remember what it's like wondering if He would help you when you didn't deserve His help, and yet He was faithful and true and helped you anyway. You ought to remain humble. You ought to remain hungry. Uh, listen. You ought to never get where you're so full of the Lord you don't want any more. You ought to remain hungry. You want more from Him. Hmm. I, I worry about this crowd. They're, they're looking for a, a place to get off the boat. I want more of Him. Hmm. I remain hungry for the things of God, hungry for His Word, hungry for fellowship with His people, hungry for His peace, hungry for His strength. And I thought about this, you need to remain holy. There's several outline factors that causes the world to know that we're God's people. Number one, Jesus said, the world will know you're my disciples and that you have love one for another. This world's full of hate. We have a media and a political system for the last two years that has promoted nothing but hate and racial divide. Listen, I was sitting in a black church Friday night and I looked around, I didn't see black folks and white folks and you know Hispanic folks. And you know what I saw? I saw family. That's what I saw. Uh, there are people up there I've known for 15 years. They was glad to see me and I was glad to see them. It didn't matter what color we are. Say, what's the difference? The love of Christ. Hmm? Uh, listen, I got family members that I don't particularly agree with on a lot of issues, on a lot of things they're doing. But you know what I love them? It was their family. Uh, when you... Have the love of God in you. And you're with other people have the love of God in them. It's a natural thing. You just love them. You're a family. We have a kindred spirit. The world will know that we're his disciples, that we have love one for another. But the world will also know that we're his disciples when we don't look like the world. We don't smell like the world. We don't act like the world. We don't have the desires the world has. We have a holiness about us. Not that we think we're better than them. Remember the first point of remaining, being humble. I know I'm not worth the powder it'd take to blow away. I'm not better than anybody. Hmm? But can I say, by the grace of God, I've been saved. I've been robed in His righteousness. My name is recorded in heaven. My citizenship is there. 
I am in this world, but not of this world. Uh, I belong to that heavenly land. Uh, and when the Lord looks at me, He's made me a joint heir to His throne. He don't see my faults. He don't see my failures. He's forgiven me and cleansed me of all of that. What He does see is His child, uh, and He's made me a joint heir to His throne. Uh, and all He asks from me is to love Him like He loves me. And when I love Him the way I should, then I don't get caught up in a lot of things the world offers. And it's not because I think I'm better than somebody else. It's just that I don't want to disappoint Him because He's never disappointed me. And when I'm living the way that honors Him, I'm living in a way that this world don't understand. Hmm? It amazes me. We... We was over at Sid's place yesterday doing a little work, and Miss Nett and I on her patio, and these people come by, and there's some nice people introducing themselves and everything, and I'm, I'm tired of telling them I don't live there. I'm, I'm over there all the time doing work on her place. They think I live there. I say, I don't live here. My daughter lives here. And this one, one old gal, she's walking her dog, had a cute little dog, and she said, well, tell your daughter we're getting ready to start up our, our pool light parties and we have all kinds of drinks, and she can come, and we drink, and we toast, and we do all... And I said, Miss Nett said, we're not drinkers. Hmm? She said, oh, she won't like our kind of party then. You're right. But we're having a celebration at church tomorrow. You can come over there. You probably won't like our celebration either, but we have a good time over there. And when we leave, we remember what we said, and where we were, and what we did. But there was another fellow standing there, and he said, as soon as Miss Nett said, we're not drinkers, he said, I've only drank five times in my life. He's trying to ride the fence there, huh? Listen, we did not show any disdain to that lady because she's a drinker. But I'm glad I drank from a different fountain. Uh, you don't have to succumb to this world to win this world. When you live for Jesus Christ, they notice the difference. Mm -hmm. And friends, when you show them the compassion of Jesus Christ, they'll want the difference. Friends, we're living in the last days. This thing's a winding down. I quit watching Fox News almost two years ago. I quit watching all news about six months ago. I got tired of being lied to. I get some news on some media outlets that send me some stuff that seems to be kind of trustworthy, but listen, let me help you. The news of this world is not good news. But the news of Jesus Christ, the gospel, is good news. That you and I, which deserve to die and go to hell, we don't have to. Because Jesus died for our sins. He was buried and rose again according to the Scriptures. And He proved that He was the Lord of glory. He conquered death, hell, and the grave, and He conquered sin. And you and I could be saved from our sin if we'll put our faith and trust in Him. That's good news. You don't have to die and go to hell. You can go to heaven when you die. And the relationship that was in the beginning before man fell to sin can be restored, uh, and you can have a relationship with the one who made you. That's good news. You can be saved from your sins. I'm glad my, my sin is not held accountable to me anymore. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ been applied to my life. You say, Preacher, you fail the grace of God. I do. But I'm thankful He doesn't fail me. And I bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're living in the last days. A lot of people don't have hope. We ought to have hope. We ought to walk in that hope, live in that hope. We ought to be good to people and try and win as many as we can. We ought to be a, a, a lighthouse, sit on a hill, that vessels going by we want to see what makes us tick. And we can tell them, his name is Jesus. Let me ask you something. Why are you so gloomed today? Today may be the day you meet Jesus. Hmm? There's a song that the Phillips family sings, and I, I, I sing it to myself all the time, but I only know one line. But I like the line. talks about when we get to see Jesus, although I met him a long time ago. I know him, yet I've never seen him. Hmm? 
Hey, I listened to him speak through his word, but I've never heard his voice. And I'm going to a land that I'm a citizen of that I've never been there. And I'm a longing for the trip. Life's too short, and the coming of the Lord is too soon for us to live a gloomy life. If you're not where you should be, I'd get there today. And if you're here today and you don't know the Lord, we'd love to introduce you to him. There's nothing like knowing Jesus. I've known him for 48 years, and I'm not sorry for a day of it. He has been so good to me in my life. And he's no respecter of persons. He wants to be good to you in your life. And all he asks is that you put your faith in him. And if you'll do that, friend, he'll change your life. Say, how do you know? He changed mine. And I've seen him change many people's lives over here. You see all these folks in here looking nice, dressed nice, and, and appearing nice. You should have seen them before they met Jesus. Huh? There's some in here make rednecks ashamed. I mean, I mean, there's some in here that was bad. There's some in here, I mean, that sinners were ashamed of. So, well, what happened? They met the Lord, and he changed their lives. And he'll change your life, friend. I highly recommend him. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. If you don't know the Lord, we invite you to come. We'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how you can be saved. You can be saved today. If you know him, are you ready for his coming? He's coming. Hmm? Preach one time, ready or not, here he comes. Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? If he spoke to your heart, the altar's open. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, thank you for the privilege of knowing you and the free pardon of sins. Thank you for having a relationship with you, Lord. Talk to you all the time. Lord, I thank you that you speak to me through your word and through the Spirit of God. Lord, I'm thankful. Oh, I'm so thankful for how good you've been to me. Lord, help me to love you the way you love me. Now, bless this invitation. God, you know the heart of everyone here. You know the needs in their lives. I pray you'd give comfort and help and strength. I pray especially if there's anybody here today that don't know you, that would today be the day they come put their faith in the Lord. Blessing this invitation. And Father, we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.